Hello, hello, I'm Juliana Haver, the plant-based dietitian, and this is the What Would Juliana Do Q&A. I've spoken about this topic many times in the past and written about it extensively, but it is a very important problem, so I wanted to address it one more time today. Vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is this little finicky vitamin with an attitude problem, and we need to be really careful around it. Anyone who is vegan or on a plant-based diet or and or anyone over the age of 50, 5 needs to supplement with vitamin B12. This is a nutrient that is basically, it comes from the soil and animals consume it. It's available in the ruminant animals, in the rumen. Uh, and then when you don't eat it, you're not gonna get a source of it. Now on a plant-based diet, you can get things like fortified foods like nutritional yeast, which of course I love. I put that in pretty much most of my recipes and other kind of like fortified plant milks. It is available, but because it is so finicky and it has this, requires this very specific type of logarithmic absorption curve that makes it harder to absorb in the body, this is something we all need to be mindful of. So what does that mean? That means avoiding, you know, not focusing on the fortified foods, instead focusing on getting a supplement because that we know exactly the numbers that are optimal for absorption. So there are three ways you can supplement with B12. One way is if you like to take pills more frequently, you can do 50 micrograms twice a day, or you can do 150 micrograms one time a day. The easiest least pill option would be to take a big supplement or a larger dose of 2,500 micrograms a week, so a weekly dose. Sometimes I've read 2,000, sometimes 2,500. Um, I think both of those are okay. So that is really, really important. Just make sure you're covering your bases. The reason I'm so concerned about this is because a lot of people think, oh, I'm getting plenty of it. And this is actually, it's shown up in a client before because she didn't like to take her medicine. I'm now concerned that's happening with my daughter who will not take her, I mean, supplements. My daughter will not take her supplements. I'm actually taking her to the doctor because this is what I suspect is happening. Here's the problem. B12 is so interesting. You can't necessarily test very accurate, accurately for it. Also, it will be in your bloodstream. It will stay there after you've consumed it for a long time. Like when it comes from animal products, you've been eating that. You may not show um, a deficiency for years and years to come. However, unfortunately, it will show up as neurological issues with symptoms later down the line. And the problem is that these can be irreversible. I'm so concerned that people don't take this seriously enough. So please take your B12. I don't want you to have irreversible neurological problems for life. That would be very, like just something you could, it's so solvable and easy to fix that that's why I am out there telling people, please take your B12. Now, there's some people that also think, oh, I'm gonna take spirulina or this other these other analogs of B12. No, because what happens is those block the receptors of for vitamin B12 in the body and you actually won't even absorb the active B12. So that is not an option. I don't recommend that food or those products mostly at all because of this reason. The other thing is B12 requires intrinsic factor in your stomach to help the absorption process. This is why as we age, we start kind of decreasing the amount of intrinsic factor that we produce so that it makes it harder to absorb the B12. That's why once you're over 50, I mean, you could look at the USDA Institute of Medicine recommendations, they say over 50, you need to supplement. So it's quite an interesting finicky nutrient. So please be mindful of it. I also get the question about cyano versus methylcobalamin, those two different forms, the most popular, there are multiple forms of B12 that you could find at the market. I recommend cyanocobalamin for most people because it is available, it's easy to find. It is also, it's been tested and it's shelf stable, it's very stable. Now there are people with the, that gene that requires the methyl form, so that's fine as well. But just take your B12, I'm begging you. It doesn't matter, you can get your labs drawn and you would you would ask for an MMA, a methyl malonic acid test, to know your more of your B12 status because if you actually look at the B12 status, it's not a very accurate indicator. Very complicated vitamin. I have all this information for free on my website, plantbaseddietitian.com. I have it in my papers, all of my five books that I've written thus far talk about this because it is that important. The other thing to, I should just tune in is that it's a water soluble nutrient, so you're not going to overdose. I don't even think there are reported cases of an overdose of V12. But again, you want to stick to those parameters, the 50 twice a day, the 150 once a day, or the 2500 once a week because of the way it absorbs. That's it's really important. So, you know, don't worry about overdoing it, but those are the, the ways to focus on it. Okay, so I hope that helps. Please leave your questions and comments below and via direct message or 
meet me at my website, plantbaseddietitian.com. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.